Hi everyone, my name is Henry Cannavale, and this is my session, How Do You All the Clouds? In this session, I'd like to cover a number of different things. First is base planning and understanding for your cloud adoption needs. The second one is to establish common security issues for your teams and organizations that you support, or for yourself as you're deploying your workloads onto a cloud uh, environment. The third is recognizing your stakeholders and partners throughout the journey as you're maturing your process and adoption of your cloud environments. And finally, where the focus of this con of this conversation I'd like to have with you is one way, is to introduce security tools, insights, and perspectives. I am going to presume that a lot of you are not as familiar with how to really take advantage of the cloud. And so we'll talk about some of those things and um, what kinds of tools that I want to share with you that could really help you on the journey. So some quick information about myself. Uh, my name is Henry Canvell. I've been a security architect for the last several years. I've been a security professional for five plus years. I come to you as a former developer. Um, I used to develop uh, with C and C++ and Java about 10, 15 years ago. And now I kind of do Python on the side or as part of my role as a security architect. Um, one of the hats I like wearing is um, uh, I'm a data security specialist within my company, within my team. And so for now that the potential role of a log czar really sounds kind of fun to me. Um, Location-wise, I'm, I'm from the Bay Area. I live now in LA for the last few years. And a few, uh, these are a few of images that I'd like to uh, encapsulate my personality. So the, our talking target audience for today, I wanted to address the IT professionals and engineers that are deploying uh, compute workloads, either through uh, cloud functions or, app, or containerized applications, or even just straight up VMs to deploy, uh, you install software onto it. I'd also like to help address the security professionals that are not as familiar with cloud and um, how to provide them to enable them with better tools as part of their advisory roles. So what's the plan for today? Uh, to first address, I want to clarify for everyone that um, I'm not trying to target a cloud migration strategy to go through the details of why you should or shouldn't go move to the cloud. Um, I also don't want to focus on the workload planning of how you migrate your applications uh, from traditional software to cloud, uh, uh, take advantage of cloud uh, tools and services. Um, this is also not an incident response or application security type of talk. Um, however, I do want to focus on the various cloud security challenges for organization. When you talk about CMMI, that stands for the Capability Maturity Model Integration. It's a traditional framework for application and software development. Um, I want to apply it for cloud adoptions. Um, thirdly, I want to cover uh, how to, for your teams to get started in securing your, your cloud adoptions more effectively. Uh, fourth, uh, I want to provide some strategic and tactical recommendations for the audience. And finally, providing some tools and solutions to help you on your journey. So when we talk about general cloud challenges, these are pretty much the four pillars for any organization, for any type of project. You look at security and general, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you look at the governance, privacy control, your compliance programs, your legal, uh, your legal teams as, as they are your consultants or your consulted or your informed constituents and stakeholders. Uh, third, we talk about interoperability how to deploy your systems and applications to work efficiently and to collaborate effectively across multiple cloud platforms. The idea is to focus on the ability to support a multi-cloud provider environment for your enterprise. And finally, uh, that sometimes uh, kind of creeps up with you is, would be your cloud spend management, either for security or non-security purposes, your finance teams are heavily interested in how much you use your, your cloud properly. Focusing on security challenges, these are a number of different areas that I've discovered and have learned and worked with over the last five to 10 years. The first one I wanted to emphasize is the sprawled cloud accounts. 
um, and also the adoption of multiple cloud service providers. Um, oftentimes you have a lot of users that just, I have an idea, I want to push it up there, this proof of concept, and you have over time, a number of them, hundreds of them, maybe thousands. The second area I want to focus on is, uh, at least at a high level, is premise use configuration and inadequate change control. You're talking about you're protecting your environments. When you enable your IT professionals, your, um, your uh, sales engineers, your, um, uh, and other general engineers, they can build their own environments. Effectively running their own uh, virtual data center, there comes some cost in terms of operational overhead. How do you enable them? Third one, I talk about attribution. I want to make sure it's, uh, when we talk about attribution, we're talking about account ownership, points of contact with your uh, instant response, um, pretty much effectively providing a reliable identity and asset management for a number of people that need to triage the instant, for example. And so with the rest of them, they're effectively around visibility and control of understanding how your projects are being managed and deployed within your cloud compute environments. Um, in the end, how do you make that visible for a number of people more than just uh, your engineers and professionals that are running, uh, self-servicing their own cloud service needs. So when I talk about the cloud maturity model integration, this framework has been traditionally focused on application development and deployments. And so we talked about these five different areas. You have initial, managed, defined, quantitatively managed and optimizing. Most environments, um, when you're deploying software, it's pretty much, again, like proof of concept thing uh, to all the way to something that's really snazzy, something that's really taking advantage of cloud environments, um, or uh, sorry, to take advantage of their software, the tech stack. So we want to adopt this to, to uh, cloud as well. So when you talk about the cloud adoption journey, we have these, uh, these areas as well, uh, projects, deploying projects, um, typically that means a proof of concept. I have an idea. I want to run it somewhere else. I don't have a data center, or maybe I just want to stand up really quickly and show that we are capable of running an application in this in a new environment. When you talk about foundation, it's pretty much like a lift and shift, moving it over that you are using cloud. It's it's not your data center anymore, but it, it's the application is really aware. It just still kind of runs properly, and so um, you're you're pretty much the basis of your enterprise applications. When you talk about migration. We're talking about um, how much of uh, application has been moved over, uh, much of the, the dependencies on your applications that are using cloud services, but the application may not necessarily be aware of it. And finally, reinvention, rebuilding the application itself. So these cloud migration strategies I just talked about, lift and shift, refactor, rebuild in different ways. Lift and shift is typically when, when you have your application workload um, you're still leveraging, you're, you're minimizing the types of changes on your applications and moving towards uh, moving your legacy systems and applications. Um, and you're not really taking advantage of cloud, you're just moving it to a new virtual space, if you will. And so with each of these come with varying levels of flexibility and effort for a reason. Uh, for lift and shift, the slide's very low. You just want to pretty much swap your software into a new environment from the data center or some other data or some other cloud environment to a personal one to something that's managed by the IT organization, but you're not really changing much. When you're talking about refactoring, that's where I mentioned about back in this slide about location, where you're talking about refactoring a little bit into using uh, new tools or new backend software, for example, and then rebuilding when you're actually taking advantage of things like auto scaling and, and when you descale as well, or a scrolling passwords via the KMS that the provider uses that you're not using um, uh, something a little more dynamic and can be with your compute systems as well. So it's, it, it takes more effort to put into it, but at least uh, it fits all your, uh, your flexibility, flexibility needs. So when we talk about CMI, that's where I want to adapt this for cloud adoption, where I see proof of concepting, where um, that's where I talk about here, with projects early in the stage, it's part of the initial adoption of cloud of cloud services. And then you kind of go through the gradient of 
becoming until you're optimizing and really taking advantage of cloud, uh, cloud services. For this talk as well, we target the audience and the trajectory for where, where are you typically? And for this talk, I want to focus on the, the stage from foundational to migration when you're from lift and shift to refactoring. What are the things that you need to take advantage of? At one, when you're when you're leveraging a lot of these cloud services, do you have visibility to it? Um, can you see it? Um, can you extract enough information and centralize it for areas or tools that you use already? So, so when we talk about security, there's four different areas you want to protect. It starts with your infrastructure, your applications themselves, your data, and your people. Keep in mind, because these four topics, these are very important for especially your privacy teams from legal, your compliance teams, your IT teams, and then your engineers. So covering a number of different bases. So for security and cloud adoptions, um, as a security professional, these are the 10 different things I look for when uh, looking at the objectives and um, how you protect it and how do you be more cloud specific. And so I want to, uh, I don't, I'm not going to go through all these in particular, but uh, the first two at least just basically taking advantage of, of cloud. Um, it's really easy to scale. Um, and be dynamic in a cloud environment. So you have to match that. And how do you, you have to build that in early? Um, once you've done the lift and shift, how do you update and aggressively challenge your processes? So next few slides, we're gonna kind of, I'll just kind of blow through them really quickly since that's focused. In a cloud environment model, it's always shared, uh, the shared security model. So you talk about who's responsible for what on a cloud platform. So as I mentioned before about uh, people, data, applications, infrastructure, there is a breakdown. And so uh, it's all the responsibility is for the cloud provider, but a lot of it is on the organization using, uh, you as a customer using the platform. So when you talk about multiple cloud services, here are a number of different uh, tools uh, across the different um, software services. Um, uh, cloud providers, AWS, Azure, and GCP are the, the three top most ones. And so you break it down into compute services, database services, storage services, networking services. And here's a number of different um, when you the products for each service for each cloud provider. From a security perspective, specifically, the different these are the different areas that you would want to focus on for each types of cloud service. We bring back to the stakeholders, as I mentioned earlier, here's a further breakdown with including the common descriptions and common roles. I leave it to you to check this out um, either here or uh, after the, the presentation. So when we look at protecting your environments, I like referring back to technology tools and processes. The technology refers to the, the capabilities of the technology, the CSP provider, or what do, or uh, pretty much what do they offer natively? What types of features and capabilities, like auto scaling is a simple example of it, or some sort of IAM store, credential store. In terms of tools, what do they offer the CSP itself or other third-party providers? And thirdly, in terms of processes, what um, your own processes of your solution of management of uh, solution? What are areas that when you manage the environment, what are your choke points? In? Uh, you need to cost them and also identify how to improve them. So in terms of simplification, I want to focus on the tools. That's why I mentioned a few times on this slide that um, the hardest thing to, is to identify the biggest pain points and also how to optimize them. So there's a number of different talks in terms of DevOps that really focus on optimizing inefficiencies. And so when you programmatically target those, a lot easier to uh, scale out your operations, your time, pretty much. So when you talk about tools, uh, I, I pretty much have this um, basic formula, build versus buy, and then time to operate. That helps define your TCL, your total cost of ownership. From a strategic recommendation perspective, I want to provide a number of different areas that help you drive success. You want to work with uh, you want to enable visibility for your organization. 
you want to run tools more easily, you want to expand coverage for the different tools and uh, the different services that you're leveraging. Um, we also want to make sure that uh, you extend your current capabilities, your tools, your skill sets. Uh, in terms of tools, it's like SIM. In terms of personnel, do you have a number of people that are that your that are your sysops? Um, do you have particular strengths in different areas? Um, optimize your time pretty much. Other areas for consideration I list over here. Um, how you? What are your dependencies? Um, some of these tools are they actively maintained? Uh, what kind of support levels, uh, support models are they offering? Do they have a premium model so you can try before you buy? Um, things like that. For common cloud security solution, um, I categorize them to these three areas. These seem are these are pretty common when you talk about migrating to the cloud. Um, these are three different type of security strategies um, or solutions to monitor based on the different types of activities or usage of it. Uh, CWPP, uh, you're focusing on your workloads. Um, you, you can talk about containers or cloud functions, how they're often they're being executed, from where, how, who's triggering it, access control, things like that. CSPM, I focus on generally, I talk about um, uh, posture management, and that mainly uh, focuses on uh, configuration and your your surface area, uh, your attack surface area. TASB is another one. A lot of providers focus on file handling and exposure and sharing, for example. Um, I like focusing on access control and reinforcing um, those types of policies. Other things to also consider for modern considerations for cloud, uh, modern compute workloads. Um, one of the things I feel is understated when you talk about DevOps, one of the biggest focus for that is infrastructure as code. However, when you talk about infrastructure as code, now you're exposing your infrastructure. If you misconfigure um, an API uh, uh, resources that may enable a certain attack vectors, but if it's infrastructure, then you're talking about exposing entire services. Um, Port ranges is a simple example of it. Um, the second thing I want to make sure everyone understands is that most, if not all, cloud uh, cloud sorry, cloud service providers they presume their default configurations and wizards are not safe by default. Uh, they Azure and and um, GCP and AWS. When you go through training, they focus on the ease for the IT professional or any professional to stand up a workload. But they are sure to always correct themselves and saying, like, don't use a default. So keep that in mind. So, tactical recommendations for this, uh, the rest of the talk, uh, I want to focus on research, tool discovery, and how you can attest or stage your progress. In terms of research, I provide for the rest of the talk, it's pretty much um, providing you a number of different links so you can research and kind of review these types of tools on your own in, in different talks. Um, if you're new or, or not as comfortable with cloud security and you need some ideas, um, what does it entail? Uh, what, how do you discover new tools? How do you discover new perspectives? I would push towards, um, a, these are a sampling of different uh, websites. Uh, one of my favorites is TLDR Set. Every week he sends a newsletter and compiles a number of different tools across. It's, it's targeted initially for um, the application developer, however, uh, for AppSec purposes, but they also cover a number of different things. So uh, container security, uh, cloud security, vulnerability management, it's, it's pretty much the entire gamut. And so you can list a number of different tools. So it's a wonderful resource. Um, another one that I recommend is this Tony Blitz. Um, his repo, my arsenal of AWS security tools. He also built a tool called Prowler. So it's pretty good stuff. So it's very exhaustive. A number of different resources, tools, uh, code scanners, all these different things that are mostly open source. You can try yourself. Uh, Aquaset, they uh, they offer a premium type of product, uh, but they have wonderful content regarding how to train and really understand cloud security. And so I gave you an example here with their cloud security scanner. Uh, there's a number of different links that they have to cover the different topics. So I highly recommend those. 
And the last one I do want to uh, share with you is Chaos Monkey. While it's not specifically security, Netflix has been in the game for cloud adoption for a long time. They've identified a number of different um, problems, strategies, um, deployments, and they want to share a lot of their tools. Chaos Monkey is an old tool that was focused on this concept of chaos engineering. If How do you build more resilient processes and tools so if part of your environment goes down, your, your service still runs properly? And so they've extended that to uh, Security Monkey and then uh, I think it was Security Gorilla to pretty much do a lot of those things of detection and remediation of uh, things that are bad for your environment. So check those out. Um, the other thing for research I want to emphasize is the attack vectors, the different types of attacks on your environment are completely different than data center. Um, you've seen AWS misconfigure a uh, certain setting and taking down the half the web, half the internet because a lot of them were using S3 as part of their um, web hosting. So that opens a new kind of forms. Um, the MITRE framework, I'm just going to focus on leaving these two here, that they've adapted their attack framework in two, two ways. One of them is for adapting for cloud specifically, and two, instead of standard attack, they, from the attack perspective, flipped it over for defend. And so there's a link for that so you can see how it kind of pivots and how you can defend your environments as well. Um, so other areas of consideration, uh, these are different tools I mentioned earlier, and you can we can leverage them over here as well. For tools, I want to share with you CSP, a cloud service provider, that is native to those platforms. GCP has two tools I like. One of them, uh, one of them is a generic link. The other one's for asset inventory. So they have a quick way of identifying all your assets. Um, I'm more familiar with AWS. Um, so Config and Audit Manager are great. The IM Analyzer is also uh, pretty snazzy. Uh, there's a number of different checks from the credit reports, uh, the, the IAM credential report that you can also port into different tools that AWS uses. But the IAM analyzer is free of charge and you can analyze and verifying all the different aspects. So there's different ways to set, uh, determine your identity and entities. Here's a number of different open source and closed source tools. List a lot of uh, a lot of these different tools kind of reference each other as well, kind of in a nested fashion. Because as you realize, not every tool can cover a lot of things, so let's bring in a lot of them. So here's a here's an example. Uh, one of my favorites is Scout Suite. Um, it can scan multiple uh, environments. Let's see this place. Oh no, it doesn't. Uh, here's a link I can provide. If you go to Scout Suite, um, this this link should uh, animate itself. And so it basically builds a report. And so when you run it, it can create an HTML page and you can look at the different um, checks. Uh, bases off uh, for AWS or TCP or Azure, you have a set of security checks policies that all assess against the configuration that's specific for the cloud and for that provider, but also they look at it from CIS as well. So it's great. Um, I like using it for multi-cloud environments. Prowler is the one I mentioned by Tony Blakes. Uh, this is also a uh, Linux-based one to run, and it has a nice UI as well. And lastly, I want to talk about simulation. One of the biggest things um, when you adopt new tools, adopt new cloud environments, it's really hard to recognize, I did all this project. I, I did all this work together. I defined policies. I'm integrating and tightening up my security groups. Um, I reduced the number of publicly accessible services or storage. Um, I encrypted um, my backups and my snapshots and my, and my um, attached volumes, but how do I verify it? Or how do I test my tools? And so these are a number of different tools that, um, that I think would really help you kind of scale based on different use cases, based on different, um, uh, if it's specific cloud, or even you want to extend it to Kubernetes, for example, for applications potentially, or how do you stand up uh, environments that are actually bad by default? Uh, SAD Cloud and TerraGuilt are two examples of those that you deploy poorly configured environments. Then you can test your detection tools. If it's scan, is it tracking it properly? And so I highly recommend those. Um, the 
last one, the flaws up cloud should be awesome for you. Uh, that's kind of like a CTF. You can actually test it and practice uh, your skill sets, um, improve their skill sets, and also challenge yourself of understanding uh, when when I see this, how do I detect it, or what do I look for right, to that? So um, that's pretty much it. So a lot of different ideas I tried throwing to you in a quick 30 minute call. Hopefully it's, it's not too much. Um, I want to make sure that you guys have enough information to uh, look back and kind of review your what you've learned. Um, how to best partner with, uh, if you're an IT professional or an engineer, work with your security professional, or if you're a security professional, understand more of the different tools and how to assess cloud if you're not as familiar. Um, so it's, it's about synergy in the end, working with your organization. So um, in the end, I want to make sure that you're enabled with tools and understanding what different processes and to effectively work smarter, not harder. So um, I'll be online, obviously, uh, during the talk. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks to the Blue Team Village for everything. Um, if you have any questions, hit me up. Um, and there's a few other links in the appendix as well. Thank you.